Hello everyone, this is David, and welcome back for another X-Files episode. Tonight's episode is the 12th episode of the first season, Fire. And this does indeed deal with fire quite a bit. Um, the idea here is we're dealing with a pyrokinetic. Now, what is a pyrokinetic? Well, if you know any sci-fi at all, which I'm assuming people coming here probably know at least a little, a pyrokinetic is a form of uh, psychic that can control, manipulate, and create fire. Uh, generally considered one of the more just flat-out destructive forms of uh, psychokinesis that exists kind of in fiction, um, with one exception that I'm aware of, which is uh, gravikinesis, but that's exceedingly rare. Um, I've only seen that in a few forms of sci-fi ever, and gravikinesis is literally just manipulation of gravity, which being a fundamental force, quite powerful. But here we're dealing with a um, with a power kinetic in a setting that largely doesn't believe in psychics. So he has a lot of advantages going for him, being that when you really boil it down, you can burn just about anything. And he makes, and this power kinetic is in fact an assassin. So the opening starts off with a man, elderly man, saying goodbye to his wife, um, and getting into a car when he just catches on fire and kind of burns to death. And his Irish gardener, Cecil, is looking on, watching as he burns. Now, you're kind of led to believe that Cecil is the one causing this, which it's it's never really um, it's never really made unclear. It, he very much is a pyrokinetic. Meanwhile, in back in Washington, Fox and uh, Fox and Dana are being met by uh, Phoebe Green, who is an investigator from. Um, Scotland Yard, and uh, she's a former love interest of Mulder from Oxford University when he spent time there, because if you remember, I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but he's an Oxford-educated um, student, so he spends time over in, you know, England studying, and she has this really bizarre case, and she knows that he likes really bizarre cases, even though I think he kind of got into that afterwards, but he probably always had that in him. Um, and that basically they're dealing with a serial arsonist who's killing off important British aristocracy, and he likes to send them letters beforehand, and that the next target is this guy, um, Marsden, who's coming to Cape Cod for a vacation to try to get away from the attacks. Um, they, they're doing, like, they're running basically the numbers on the previous... Um, attack and trying to figure out how the person was doing what he did. And uh, Mulder kind of comes to the conclusion that the man uh, is a power kinetic. Scully doesn't buy it. She, she keeps on checking to see if there's some alternate uh, method that could have been used or some like sort of like high-tech device that could have lit the guy on fire. But the pyrotech, uh, the explosives expert that they get on it, the guy who works at the FBI, is like, well... I've seen fire do crazy things, but there's always a science behind it. But this, this is just, this is just bizarro. The stuff going on here is just above and beyond anything I've seen. So, I mean, I'm going to keep looking into it, but it's just, we're talking thousands of degrees of temperature. And a man, like, the man would have had to have been covered in some sort of rocket fuel, effectively, to burn like that. And... Getting that onto somebody without being noticed, that's pretty difficult. Meanwhile, uh, Cecil has killed and replaced the caretaker of the house that the family is staying at, because he's a very sneaky man. And uh, they keep investigating, trying to figure out what this guy looks like. Um, Cecil, however, is a very arrogant man. So uh, one night when he goes into town to buy some, this dude take care of some stuff, he buys some cough syrup for the bodyguard slash driver who is getting a little sick. Um, he goes to the bar, he shows off to a girl, lights his whole harm on fire, and then eventually burns the whole place down. Um, witnesses said they, uh, the girl, they bring the girl in, she says that, uh, she saw the man light himself on fire, but he didn't seem to be bothered by it, you know. So they think, they're like, can we get us an artist sketch of what this guy looks like? And they make it out, and it looks... They finally run all the stuff. Uh, meanwhile, um, Cecil has poisoned 
the um, the bodyguard. Uh, I don't know if it was like just with poison or just something to make him even more sick. Little A, little B. And they go into Boston to do. Um, they get, they're going into Boston to take care of some stuff, uh, to do like a dinner or something like that. And um, you know, Cecil's watching the kids, and there's a fire up by there, and they think that's that's the assassin was was doing that. And um, Mulder and Fo- uh, Phoebe are like dancing together, and it's a good time. But like Mulder has to go through the fire, and as it turns out, Mulder is deathly afraid of fire. I forget the exact reason behind it, but he has like a childhood aversion to fire for uh, something. Um, meanwhile, so afterwards, they they all of them head back home, and they find the police sketch, which looks just like the driver who it turns out isn't the driver he's actually the caretaker but Mulder thought he was the driver uh Cecil has since killed the driver um and they confront him there's a there's a fire battle basically Mulder has to confront his fears he saves the kids they manage to uh Scully douses the guy in gasoline and he goes up like a candle but and it they solve the case Green returns to England and um, apparently Lively is in a medical facility awaiting trial, but he's healing. Uh, he was burned over his entire body, but apparently he's regenerating incredibly quickly. And they've come to the conclusion that they don't know how they're going to hold him, because the man can burn anything or anyone. So how are they going to imprison him? No one knows. So it's going to be it's going to be an interesting interesting thing. We never really get to find out, but it's quite an interesting uh, monster of the week episode. Um I give this one a 7 out of 10 because the concept is great. They actually have a pyrokinetic who's basically a hitman. He's not actually a hitman because he's doing this for his own personal agenda. Uh I'm guessing he's just um like kind of um <laughs> what is it? One of those Irish um like basically a, the equivalent of like an Irish car bomber, uh, just a man attacking the British nobility because he blames them for problems in Ireland. We don't really get an insight to that. He kind of just seems to do whatever he wants because he feels like he can. But nah, it's one you know three fourths one way and seventy five percent the other. You know who knows what what his real motivations are. We don't really get a clear motivation per se, but you can infer things, I suppose. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is one of the a better, certainly above average episodes. I certainly enjoyed it. Uh, a little bit different. We don't often get um, psychics that can do just blatantly crazy things on the show, so when we do, it's always kind of interesting to see that kind of human. A lot, uh, a lot of times, like, they'll have a psychic, and they'll be like a telepath or like a spirit photographer. Or they'll have some sort of, like, passive ability that's very hard to actively prove it's like oh well maybe you can talk to spirits but maybe you can't or maybe you can read my mind or maybe you're just really insightful or maybe you can you know control people with your mind or whatever but in this case this is a man that just makes and controls fire and burns people alive and does it for shits and giggles and that just kind of amuses me so definitely check this one out and uh tune in next time when we have a Scully-relevant episode in the episode Beyond the Sea. We'll learn what's beyond the sea in that episode. All right, folks, we'll see you next time. Bye.